Hello and welcome to my channel. Apple's taken another step toward making the iPad feel even more like a computer. With iPad OS 26, we're getting some of the most Mac-like features the iPad has ever seen. In this video, I'll break down my favorite new features and standout updates that really improve the iPad experience. The first thing you'll notice is the new liquid glass design. The whole system now looks translucent with a frosted glass effect that blends with your wallpaper. This style is reflected everywhere on your iPad, from app icons to widgets and the rest of the user interface. There are more customization options too, like switching between light and dark mode. It's mostly visual, but it gives the iPad a fresh, modern style. If you enjoy customizing your iPad, you'll love this update. It looks fantastic and makes it so much easier to keep a cohesive color scheme on your home screen without relying on third-party apps. By the way, I have a full tutorial on customizing your iPad if you want to know how I set up my home screen. The new windowing system really improves productivity and finally makes multitasking feel closer to a desktop. You can resize apps and stack them with much more flexibility, and a tiling menu offers presets that make arranging your screen quick and straightforward, allowing you to multitask with up to four windows. Swipe up to the middle to view all of your open windows, or swipe up all the way to return to the home screen. It does take a little getting used to, but it's the closest the iPad has ever been to true desktop multitasking, while still built for touch. There's also a new window controller that simplifies app management, letting you close, minimize, or expand apps into full screen mode. On top of that, there's a new menu bar at the top of the screen. Just like on a Mac, it displays the available commands for whichever app you're using. It stays hidden until you need it, and the menu options make apps feel more consistent and intuitive. This keyboard case I'm using is from ESR, by the way, and I'll put all of my Amazon favorites in the video description. I'm really excited that Preview app has finally come to the iPad. If you've used a Mac, you'll know how useful this is. It's fantastic for working with PDFs, all the hyperlinks in my digital planner work perfectly, and you get the same markup tools as the Notes app. You can add images, reorder pages, scan and sign documents, and even fill out forms. I've been relying on third-party apps like GoodNotes, but Preview looks like a great, free, built-in alternative for digital planning and note-taking, even if it's not as advanced as apps like GoodNotes. This is a major upgrade for anyone handling documents. If you want to know more about digital planning, check out my other videos where I go into more detail. The Notes app also has a new read pen inspired by traditional calligraphy. It automatically adjusts stroke thickness based on how you write, and you can tweak the angle, line weight, and opacity for creative effects. The same tool is also available in Preview, and this is perfect for headers, journaling, or adding style to your notes. While we're on the topic of note-taking, I use Paperlike. Thanks to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. Paperlike is the original paper fill screen protector, and this is a matte screen protector available for all iPads. Writing directly on the glass screen can feel very slippery, and with the Paperlike screen protector, you get much better control and precision when you're using the Apple Pencil, and this really helps me to write neatly. Paperlike's unique nano dots are these tiny microbeads that add resistance and improve haptic feedback when using the Apple Pencil, emulating the feeling of writing on paper. So if you're looking for an iPad screen protector and you want to replicate the feeling of writing and drawing on paper, then make sure to check out my link in the video description and try out Paperlike. Speaking of journaling, iPad now has a dedicated journal app. You can type with a keyboard, handwrite with the Apple Pencil, and sketch directly on the page. Bring your entries to life with photos, audio recordings, and map locations, and there's also built-in mood tracking so you can reflect on how you're feeling over time. Entries can be organized into categories, making it easy to look back on specific themes or periods in your life. Altogether, journal makes for an ideal starting point if you're new to digital journaling. Apple Intelligence first came to iPad in iPadOS 18, and with iPadOS 26, it's getting more powerful. Image Playground lets you turn text prompts into images in different styles, sketches, animations, or illustrations. It's not perfect, but you can swipe through variations to find the one you like. Genmoji can be accessed from your emoji keyboard, and this lets you create custom emojis with unique expressions. You can now combine emojis in new and creative ways. 
I had fun experimenting with custom emojis and they work seamlessly in messages and other apps. The catch is that Genmoji doesn't work in all third-party apps and both Apple intelligence features require iPads with newer chips. The Files app also feels more Mac-like. Folders can now be customized with colors and icons, making it easier to visually organize your documents. If there's a folder you use frequently, you can drag it straight into your doc so it's always right there when you need it. In list view, subfolders collapse and expand, keeping things tidier and making it easier to navigate through all your files. These are small changes, but together they make managing files on iPad much smoother. Math Notes now supports 3D graphing, which is a big deal for students or anyone working with equations. Just write out an equation with three variables and it will generate a 3D graph you can rotate and explore. Update the equation and the graph changes in real time. It's a really useful upgrade for learning and visualizing math on the iPad. So those are the best iPadOS 26 features. Did I miss your favorite? And which of these features do you think will actually change how you use your iPad? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more updates. Thanks for watching.